teach you. I'm going to rapture out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What a privilege. What an honor. And your name is written in the Lamb's Book. Whoo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. That's shouting ground right there. Amen. I say that's shouting ground Hallelujah. right there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The psalmist declared that your name is inscribed in God's palm. Yeah. I want you to picture Jesus on the cross, nail driven through his hand. And can you just picture him just for a moment? Just looking over at his hand and seeing your name written there. Because he did it for you. Yeah. He did it for me. He had no need of going to the cross. He was perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But he knew and God knew that we were in desperate need of a Savior. And Jesus said, I'll do it. Oh. He is so, that's why he is so worthy of praise. Yeah. He said, I'll, I'll do it. Hallelujah. I'll, go, I'll go take the hit. I'll take the heat. Mm -hmm. Come on, who am I talking to this morning? Hallelujah. I'll take the heat. Hallelujah. I'll take the hit. I'll pay the penalty. I'll allow them to whip me. Come on, my entrails will come spilling out. Yeah, come on. Psalm 22 said, I can count my bones. It's the only time you see into the psyche of Jesus Christ of Nazareth on the cross. Psalm 22. He said, I'm surrounded by strong bulls. Yeah. I can count my bones. They plucked my beard. Mm -hmm. come, on. come on. Roman soldiers whipped him open. Yeah. So he could see his bones. Mm -hmm. He could see them. Yeah. Maybe he didn't know that. Uh, hallelujah. He took, he took it. He said, they're, 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 they're gambling for my clothes. He saw it. David saw it when he wrote Psalm 22. But Jesus talked about it in Psalm 22. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. He's worthy. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes him Amen. worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you. He's worthy. He's God worthy. deemed him worthy. He deemed his sacrifice acceptable enough for everybody. Right. Amen. Oh Thank my. Jesus. You don't have to pay for the penalty of your sin. Right. Oh, I know Sunday morning people want to be talking about sin. Well, I'm not that kind of preacher. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, whether, right. you, whether you think you need to hear it or not. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There's, there's much too much of a move in the postmodern church today to whitewash sin. Yeah. Yeah. To push it away. Oh, no, no, it's just a weakness I have. See, if it's a weakness, you don't need to confess it. Right. Amen. If it's a weakness, you don't need to confess it. And the Bible says when you confess your sins, right. it's when you get washed. Right. Amen. 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 Thank you, Are you listening to me? Amen. You get washed. Yeah. And what should your confession be? Oh, Lord, I'm such a terrible sinner. I'm such a terrible No, 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 Lord, thank you that my sins are forgiven. I confess. Thank you, Jesus. That my yeah. sins are forgiven. You have forgiven all of my sins. You have washed me clean. Yeah. And I come into your presence I like I never sinned. Oh, 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 oh. man. Like you never sinned. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm accepted. I can't be any more loved than I am right now. I can't get God to love me any more than he loves me right now. Amen. Amen. I, listen, I am perfectly loved. Somebody say that out loud. Amen. I am perfectly Amen. loved. Amen. It's the foundation of everything we're teaching right now. Everything we've been teaching since the beginning of the year yeah. is on this foundation of righteousness. Right. You have been declared right with right. God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Jesus. Right? And you can have your vision list. And you should. We gave you a vision sheet to write vision down on. Right. Why? Yeah. Because it's what the Bible says to do. Right, right. Right? And some of you wrote it down in December and you haven't looked at it since. Come on. Come on. And some of you, you weren't here in December and you need one. You can get one in the back or you can start your own right now. Yes. Amen. 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 Habakkuk says, write it down, make it plain. Right. Right. Why? Why? So that you can run with it. Right. Uh, Amen. Hallelujah. You can run with it. Yes. I say you can run with it. Amen. Even when it gets hard. Yeah, Even when it looks like it's not going to happen. Right. 
you can run with it. Why? You got it written down. You're looking at it. Right. You're speaking to it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But everything we've taught from the beginning of the year to this moment has all been undergirded by righteousness. Amen. Right standing with God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we want to welcome everybody out there on the various social media platforms. Now that we've given you time to warm up and get your cup of coffee and sit down on the couch and put your feet up. We want to invite you out here to 28 Chapel Street here in Wallingford. We'll make you most welcome. Amen. Amen. And if what we're talking about is working for you, write it in on the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. We are literally being watched all around the world at this point. Amen. You didn't know that, did you? Philippines is really making a whoop. Yeah. I mean, well, there's a big push in the Philippines. Amen. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Nigeria. Yep. I think we're up to Amen. four. <laughs> Glory to God. Pakistan, England, Ireland, hello somebody, literally all over the globe, they're tuning in. But well, aren't you glad you made the effort to get here? Yeah, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we want you to make the effort to get here. Come out and join us, 28 Chapel Street, Wednesday morning at, uh, yeah, Wednesday morning, <laughs> Sunday morning at 1030 and Friday nights at 7. Amen. But we're going to encourage you fine folks like we're encouraging these folks here, get out your Bibles. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let your eyes rest on the word of God. I believe there's a reward for digging into that book that you call the Bible and finding scripture. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says yeah. it like this. It's like digging for rubies. Yeah. And it's more precious than silver or gold. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Truth. Listen, there's lots of truth out there in the earth. Right? Now that now that people are exalting self above God, Everybody's truth. I just want to tell you my truth. I just want to tell you my truth. This is my truth. You know what? This is my truth. Listen, I have the truth. Jesus not not say he was a truth. He said, I am the truth. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I am the life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we put it on the sign out front. You shall know the truth. Who? Jesus. And Jesus will set you free. Amen. The truth will make you free. Amen. Amen. Ha. Hallelujah. Anybody come along for the ride this morning? You're all just going to look at me like a bunch of cows looking at a new game. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. You should be happy I got here. I brushed my hair. I even brushed my teeth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. Your pumate thanks you for brushing your teeth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So, we have been looking these last few times together on a Sunday... We've been looking at this topic of ruling and reigning in life. Yeah. Ruling and reigning in life. You are called to be kings and priests. Yeah. You are called by God to rule and to reign. We saw that Adam was given all authority. We saw that Adam sinned and all that authority was then transferred over to the devil, yeah. Satan. I know people don't like to talk about Satan. I believe in pulling the covers off of him. Yeah, yeah. I'll expose him for who he is. Come on, he is a liar. Yes, he is. Amen. He is a defeated foe. Yes, he is. But that does not mean that he is without power. Mm -hmm. Oh, let that sink in. That does not mean that he is without power. If you ignore him, yeah. I said, if you ignore him, right. he will come and steal everything out of your life. Yeah. He will pick your pocket. Right. He will steal your joy. Yep. He's after your praise. Yeah. Some of you are going to start getting the fact that praise is the actual key that will unlock the power of God in your life. Come on, yeah. Let me try that again. Some of you will begin to get yeah. that praise is the key yeah. that will unlock the power of God yeah. in your life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You, you, you've been reading your Bible. Yeah. You've, been, you've been reading your Bible. That's good. Right. right? You've been studying the Word. That, that's good. You've been speaking the Word. That's good. But you haven't heard that if you take the power of praise... And unlock the power of God in your life. You'll begin to see signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. 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 And if you haven't been reading. And if you haven't been praying. Well, uh, Brother Richie, he developed faith armor. Right. You can read a chapter every day. Right. right? And, and, if, and if a chapter a day isn't good enough for you, he developed a new one. Just for you. It's a, it's a verse an hour. <laughs> it's a verse an hour. Amen. You can, download, you can go to the app store. You can download it. It's Bible verse by the hour. Isn't that the name of it? Oh, it's on my screen. Do you all see it? Yeah, download it. 
And every hour you can get a scripture. I listen to every, I say every hour. I say, really, pastor, every hour? Yeah, you might need it. <laughs> I say, you might, I say, you might, you might need it. We're talking about ruling and reigning. Right? We're talking about the untapped power of praise. We're talking about the subject of righteousness. We're seeing how Adam sinned. All the authority that Adam was given was given over to Satan, and he ruled like a tyrant from Adam until Jesus stepped onto the earth. And then Jesus beat him like a rented mule. <laughs> There's a couple of things I wanted to come out there. <laughs> Are you listening to me? He took him to the cross. Yeah. You're not hearing me this morning. Jesus took Satan to the cross, not the other way around. That's the place where the battle was won. The Bible says that Jesus was not murdered. No, he was not. He was sacrificed, which means he let down his life. He said, no one. He said, the ruler of this earth is coming. He has nothing on me. I choose to lay down my life. So we go to the cross, and we see the Canaan king crucified, blood running down for our sins. Right? And that's great, and that is good. And then he goes into the grave. And in three days, he pays the penalty that you and I couldn't pay in eternity right. in hell. Amen. But I need you to come past the cross this morning. Yeah. Come on. And I need you to come out of the grave this morning. Yeah. And I want you to step into, you are a redeemed person. Yeah. Amen. You see, he's gone from being Savior to those that are not born again. To those of us who are born again, he is now my Redeemer. Amen. And there is a redemption reality that comes with being redeemed. Yes. Yes. Uh, mm, you might want to type that into the chat. There is a redemption reality that comes from being redeemed. Amen. The penalty's been paid. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh, thank you. But beyond that, I am now a child. Beyond that, I'm a king. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I'm chosen. Yeah. Beyond that, I'm a priest. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's redemptive reality. Right. And you see, we, the body of Christ, some have, have operated in this, and some of them, you see them, your favorite ministers, most of them, have gotten a hold of this truth. Yeah. They're redeemed. Are you listening to me? And they've been trusted with the truth of the word of God. But it wasn't reserved just for... Somebody say, I'm called. I'm called. I'm chosen. I'm, chosen. I'm a king. I'm a, queen. I'm a priest. I'm a priest. Hallelujah. You were called by God to rule and to reign in life. How do I know this? Because Jesus stripped Satan of the authority that he stole from Adam. Amen. At the cross. So we say he stripped him. The Colossians says he made a show of him openly. I like that. It means a little blind to us in this vernacular, but what it means is back in the time of the Bible, you defeated the king. He was stripped down naked and you paraded him behind your chariot. Naked and with a shaved beard. Yeah. Well, apparently shaving a beard is a big deal back in, back in the day. Now, are you listening to me? Some of you need to picture your adversary behind your chariot. What's that show? Naked and Afraid? <laughs> there he is. There he is. You're not hearing me this morning. He's naked. He's been stripped of authority. He's been stripped of power. And he's afraid. What's he afraid of? That you'll begin to act like a Christian. You'll begin to speak the word of God. You'll actually begin in the middle of a worship service without anybody provoking you going, Glory to God! Hallelujah! Oh, God, you're good to me! To the point where even the person in the pew next to you is going, All right. Praise the Lord. 
Maybe you should move closer and get a little bit on that on me. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah, come on. The untapped power of praise. Yeah. Praise will unlock the power of God yeah. in your life. Amen. Going through a tough time? Praise will get you to the other side. Amen. Woo! Glory. Amen. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, gotta lean here for a minute. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I know it starts to rub off on you. It gets around yet. <laughs> you yeah. little, oh, we're back there too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, when the power of God will come on you, yeah. the joy of the Lord becomes yeah. evident. Yeah. The yeah. joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. So we've been talking about ruling and we've been talking about reigning. Hallelujah. And we've seen it, that it was God's original plan. That's what, that's what you were supposed to do. Right. It's what I'm supposed to do. We also see that we're created in a higher order that's than right. Satan is. That's right. You see, he keeps coming around going, ooh, boogity boogity, I'm the Lord of death. No, you're not. Right. Not, anymore. not anymore. You were the Lord of death. That's but right. Jesus stripped you. Right. He right. took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So you're not the Lord of nothing no more. Yeah. You're not the Lord of me. You're the Lord of nothing. Right. Help, me, yeah. help me preach. He's the Lord of nothing. Right. Yeah, go ahead and type that in the chat. He's the Lord of nothing. Amen. Amen. And he's been barking at you. You're not hearing me this morning. Here's the revelation. You got him behind you. Right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. He has been stripped and chained to the back of your chariot. And he's been talking a good game to you yeah. for the last 5, 10, 15 years. You're a loser. You're not going to make it. No, I'm going to get you. Yeah, no, no, that's not, it's never going to work out for you. You know why? You're a loser. No, you know what? If God doesn't like you very much. No, no. As a matter of fact, you're a terrible sinner. Nope. All he's doing is running his gums. Come on now. And you've been listening. Lying. Yeah. Well, listen, here's the truth this morning. I'm going to hold him in a headlock. <laughs> and you're going to take the truth and scrub his mouth out with the truth. Because Jesus said when he speaks, he's a liar. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And you've been listening to the wrong voice. Uh, you're nothing. You're the wrong color. You're the wrong sex. By the way, there's only two. You're the wrong sex. I need, I need to say that for people that are watching. You know, basic biology is XX and XY. Sorry. <laughs> you're, you're one or the other. <laughs> Trust the science. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? He's been stripped of all power. He's been stripped of all authority. Amen. He's actually walking behind you. Yeah. But he's been whispering to you. And he's been doing such a good job of it that some of us have gotten locked up in the cage of fear. Amen. Afraid to move. Trying to make a deal. Listen, devil, if you don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. You know what the devil say to that? Deal. He'll say deal. You don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. He'll say, somebody say, he'll say deal. He'll say deal. Yeah, of course, because he's a liar. <laughs> somebody say broken deal. Yeah. The moment you turn your back. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is endeavoring by his Holy Spirit to give us revelation in this area. Yeah. And I sense it by the Holy Ghost that we're coming up higher. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a little bit of a struggle for some of you. Because this... this concept of unrighteousness, I'm a terrible sinner, is so permeated your life that it runs your life. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. And you shall know the truth, yeah. Amen. and the truth will set you free. Yeah. Somebody say it out loud. I am, I am. The, righteousness the righteousness of God, of God. In, Christ. in Christ. Are you in Christ? Yes. Yes. Then you're his righteousness. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. You don't have to get it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to pray extra. You don't have to fast more. It's a free gift. Right. Righteousness. Amen. Right standing Amen. with God. Amen. How many of you have ever seen in Luke's Gospel? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just listening on the inside. Where, you know, uh, you remember the peanuts? You know, Charlie Brown, you know, the, 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 what's Christmas all about? And Linus would come out and he, yeah. lights, please. And the light comes on and he's got his, and did you ever notice this? He drops his blanket. Yeah. And his blanket is at his body. He no longer needs his blanket. Yeah. He's about to tell you the truth. Yeah. And the truth sounds like this. Behold, there were shepherds in a field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And an angel of the Lord said, Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. 
I bring you good tidings of great joy for born to you this day in the city of David as a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Amen. Yeah. And then he picks his blanket up again. <laughs> Listen yeah. to me. What's God's will towards men? Somebody say peace. 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 Yeah. He announced it in that field 2,000 yeah. years ago in Bethlehem. Yeah. Here's my will for your life. Peace between me and you. Amen. So Jesus came yeah. as the sacrificial lamb. John the Baptist yeah. said it like this, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin right. of the world. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So, let's go to Romans. 5.12. Romans 5.12. Adam sinned. And the entire world was affected. Sin entered the human experience, and death was the result. And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all humanity, because all have sinned. Sin was in the world before Moses gave the written law, but it was not charged against them where no law existed. Yet death reigned right. from Adam to Moses, even though they hadn't broken the command the way Adam had. The first man, Adam, was a picture of the Messiah who is to come. Verse 17, death once held us in its grip. Death once held us in its grip. Does that sound like past tense to you? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is, isn't it? By the blunder of one man, death reigned as king over humanity. But now... How much more are we held in the grip of grace and continue reigning as kings in life, enjoying our regal freedom through the perfect gift of righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Verse 21, in the same way that sin reigned in the sphere of death, now grace reigns through God's restorative justice, eclipsing death and leading to eternal life through the anointed one, Jesus our Lord, the liberating king. Amen. Did you see this? In verse 17 it says, We were held in the, were held in the grip of grace, reigning as kings in life. This is what began the hunt for me. We're reigning as kings in life. Yeah. And it occurred to me, the body of Christ is not ruling and reigning like it should be. Come on. Yeah, come on. Individually or collectively. Right. If the body of Christ was ruling and reigning, things would be a lot different in the United States of America, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I'm not talking about political systems because, let's face it, they're fundamentally flawed. Yeah. I'm talking about the gospel being preached. From Connecticut to California. Yeah, I'm talking about Christians standing on street corners. Right. Refusing to let somebody walk by going to hell. Right. Co-workers dying and going to hell. We're letting it happen. Friends, families, neighbors. Just dying and going to hell. And we're out there mowing the lawn. Come on now. Instead of ruling right. and reigning Amen. in the neighborhood. Right. You see, each of us have been given a garden. You say, well, you know, Adam really blew this for everybody. No, 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 listen to me. <laughs> you were given a garden, too. Right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. That's good preaching. Yeah. You've been given your own Eden. Yep. Now, Eden is a very difficult word to translate. Most people would translate Eden garden. It doesn't mean that at all. It actually means portal. Right. It was a place where heaven touched earth. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a place where God came to right. the earth. And he would walk with Adam yeah. in the cool of the evening in his garden. Yeah. You see, you and I as born again, spirit filled even, Christians, are supposed to be ruling and reigning in the garden we've been yeah. entrusted with. Yeah. Yeah. Those of us who are married and we're men, we're supposed to be running the enemy off. Yeah. Ha hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Now, oh, let me help you, see, you know, because I'm an equal opportunity offender. Today is Mother's Day, is it not? Yes, it, it is. is, isn't it? And we honor all mothers everywhere, all around the globe. I had a great mom. Right? She's in heaven now. Amen. Right? My wife is the greatest mother I've ever seen. No knock to any of you. No, I said no knock to any of you, but she's the greatest one I've ever seen. Because yeah. I live with her. Amen. Right. right? So I see her day in and day out. Right. Are you listening to me? 
No, it's I, again, no knock to anybody. Right. right? But do you know what the Bible says way, way back there in the Old Testament? Honor your father and your mother. And what? Yeah. It will go well for you yeah. on yeah. the earth. Yeah. And the Bible says it like this that it is the first commandment with a promise. Right. Yeah. So, who are you supposed to honor? Mom, Mom and Dad, aren't you? <laughs> are you listening? Who are you supposed to I Amen. saw these young men start to squirm. <laughs> <laughs> I just called her jerk this morning for waking me up. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. We're supposed to honor. Yeah. We're supposed Amen. Oh, you're all looking at me. We're supposed to honor yeah. Mom and yeah. Dad. Why? It'll go well for you. Yeah. Amen. It'll go. Yeah. Who doesn't want it to go well? Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So death ri ruled and reigned until Jesus came. Right. And now we're supposed to be ruling and reigning. Right. We're supposed to be driving fear and anxiety yeah. off. That's right. Amen. right. Drugs and depression off. Right. Amen. This ministry called to the town of Wallingford has but one function, to drive the enemy off. Amen. You see, he was living here. Right. Mm -hmm. And he had good control. Yeah. Right? And he liked it. Nobody was messing with him. Right. And then along came a bunch of believers and they began praying on a Thursday night right. that there yeah. be not one more suicide in that high school. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Not one more death from drug overdose. Amen. Come on, yes. listen. Not one more loss of life to a car accident. Amen. Amen. Come on. What? That's crazy talk. No, no, no. That's faith talking. Yeah, that's right. Right? We're called. I have an assignment. You have an assignment. You're part of Faith Bible Church. This is your assignment. Right. You're to drive the adversary off. That's right. Well, I'll be mess with you. We should have a Decapolis. We should have a minimum of ten cities. <laughs> yeah. You're not hearing me this morning. Yeah. We should have a minimum of 10 cities. What would happen, dear Christian, if Wallingford was saved? Yeah. Not just some people. If Wallingford was saved. Yeah. Meriden. Yeah. North Haven. Yeah. Cheshire. Yeah. Hamden. Yeah. Durham. Yeah. Berlin. Yeah. Kensington. Glaston. Come on. Yeah. There should be 10 cities. Yeah. That we should be affecting. Yeah. You go, what? That's crazy talk. Well, listen, where do you get that from? What? If a demon can affect 10 cities at the time of Christ right. and rule and reign and run terror through yeah. a Decapolis mm -hmm. at the time of Christ, then how much more should the born again, spirit yes. creature, who has yeah. the New Testament in writing, how much more should we be right. running the devil off? Right. Amen. Amen. The Christian church has been putting up with. Mm -hmm. uh, can I start meddling? <laughs> be tolerant. Yep. Yeah. Just be tolerant. <laughs> Don't talk about sin, because it's not really sin, it's just a weakness, you understand. <laughs> no, sir. Our job is to drive the devil off. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Somebody's going to get a hold. I'm going to get teachers made up. Devil demolishing disciple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a water walking warrior. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Jackson ain't got nothing on me with the moonwalk. I'm walking on water. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 21, Romans 5 and 21. The Bible says, In the same way that sin reigned in the sphere of death, now grace reigns. Right. Through God's restorative justice, eclipsing death and leading to eternal life. So I need to address some issues here this morning regarding fear and death. You ready? Yeah, come on. You shouldn't be afraid of death at all. Right, that's right. Amen. The born again Christian should not be afraid of death at all. What happens when your spirit leaves your body as a born again Christian? You're instantly, instantly brought to heaven. Yeah. Amen. 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 Instantly, as a born-again believer, you're escorted by angels into his presence. Right. We talked a little bit about this, I think it was on Friday night, 
uh, I, don't, I don't know why, but when I was preparing notes for Friday and even for today, uh, my father was born on St. Patrick's Day, and so maybe that's the reason why. But just I began thinking about him. He's also in heaven. But, but I was with him when he transitioned out of this, this earth, when he left his body, I was holding his hand. And that moment was so holy. And I knew that there was angels in the room. I could sense yeah. there was angels in the room. And they were, and I knew, and I remember telling him, the last words I spoke, it was, Pop, go ahead, go be with Jesus. Right? And then off he went. Mm -hmm. uh, hallelujah. Right? And I, even to this moment, the glory of God is coming back on me. Yeah. And in that moment, I knew exactly where he was going. Yeah. I knew exactly what was going to happen to him. He was going to heaven. Amen. 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 And I know exactly where he is. And mom is in heaven now, too. She's in heaven three years now. I know exactly where she is. Amen. And they're alive. And they're well. Amen. They've got really big mansions. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're supping tea. Come on, somebody. And those of you who had relatives, friends that have died, that were dying in Christ, you know exactly right. where they are. Amen. You know, I so say you know exactly where they, they're alive. Yeah. They're well. Yeah. Right? So when I take a look at sickness, all sickness is, is limited death. Yeah. Amen. All disease is, is limited death. Does it have any right to rule and reign over you? No. Come on, somebody. No. No. It has no right. Sickness has no right to your body. Amen. Cancer has no right to... Diabetes has no right. High cholesterol has no right to your body. Has no right to exercise authority over you. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. Right. You're supposed to be exercising authority over it. Right. When sickness and disease shows up, you have a responsibility to run it off. Hello. Amen. You wouldn't be gone home. Because I listen, I know that, and, I, and you must understand, I love medical people. I go to Haiti with medical people. I, I'm not knocking the medical profession, right? But don't tell me how to believe. Right. I won't tell you how to practice medicine. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? You're practicing medicine. Right. Who are you practicing on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right? Come on, somebody. Right. So, uh, I, you know, I've been challenged by a couple of folks with regards to COVID. COVID has no right to my body. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. COVID has no right to your body. Amen. And I'll even hear preachers parenthetically insert, but you have to give it a certain level of respect. No, I don't respect it at all. It is from the devil. It is from my adversary, and if it comes near me, it shrivels up and it dies. Amen. That's right. I see it in my mind's eye because they made a mistake of putting it on television and showing me what it looks like. Right. Now they do, they do that, come on somebody, to make you afraid of it. Amen. Right? But I would like to point out to you that the reason it's called Corona is because it looks like a little crown. Right. Somebody say little crown. Little, little crown. Well, who's wearing the big crown? Jesus. Who gave me the crown of righteousness? Jesus. Who gave me the crown of a soul winner? Amen. Oh, no, no, no. I got a big crown. Who am I talking to this morning? Amen. A big crown. Right. Amen. Amen. And when Corona shows up, it's got to go. Right. That is my belief system and it won't be shaken there is no plague that will come near my tent That's right. That's right. oh pastor I wouldn't say that you know the devil accommodates you <laughs> he can't Amen. if the devil could have killed me he would have done it when I was in his kingdom and Lord knows he tried yeah. <laughs> come on are you listening to me Amen. and we can regale you with tales but I'm not going to what I'm going to say is, if he's so tough, if he's so strong, if he's so mean, if he's so this, why didn't he wipe you out before you got into the kingdom? Right. Because he could. Amen. Why? You're created in a higher order. Yeah, that's right. He yeah. takes advantage of people's ignorance. Yeah, yeah. Now listen, let me talk about him. You're not to underestimate how cunning he is. Yeah, right. Or how sly 
he is mm -hmm. or how deceptive. He's learned some things over these last 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's learned, he, he knew your great, 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 great grandfather, Adam. Mm -hmm. right. And he's known your whole family. He's right. learned some things about you. I hear all these preachers, well, it, it's, it comes in waves. We're going to break generational curses. We're going to break generational curses. Well, okay, but when I came into the kingdom, because, you know, talk about your family tree. You see, your mama had diabetes, and your grandma had diabetes, and your great-great-grandma had diabetes. They all died of diabetes, so you have to die of diabetes, and you have to die early. Well, that's your bloodline. That's why they ask you all those questions when you go to the doctor. Can you tell me about your father's medical history and your grandfather's medical history? They want, they want to see if there's a trend in your family tree. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I, I said, uh, I was talking with one doctor one day. I said, I'd like to show you my family tree. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the moment that he went to the cross and hung all of my sickness and all of my disease on that tree is the day I was delivered from it. You Amen. see, I'm not trying to get God to heal me. I am healed. Amen. Amen. By his stripes, Amen. I am healed. Amen. And listen, that doesn't mean that I don't have wonderful opportunities to heal to symptoms just like you. Symptoms trying to get on me. Yep. Are you listening to me? But I have a right and a responsibility yeah. to run them off. Right. And I should. Yeah. You, should. you know, in Luke's gospel, in Luke's gospel, and in the tenth chapter, and we looked at this a couple of weeks ago. I'd just, I'd like to refresh your memory. Somebody say, "It's good that I hear it again." It's good that I hear it again. Luke ten, in verse nineteen, Jesus is speaking, and I'm coming out of the Amplified because it really brings out exactly what it is that the Holy Ghost is trying to get across to us today. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. Right. Somebody say, "I'm listening." I'm listening. listening. Carefully. Carefully. What does that mean? You're full of care. You're leaning in. You're not off on Arrakis. You're not picturing meatballs. <laughs> little Italian bread. Right? You're engaged. You're listening carefully. You're leaning in. Spiritually, your spiritual ears have picked up. Yeah. You're listening. Amen. I, Jesus is talking, I have given you authority yeah. that you now possess. To tread on serpents and scorpions. Right. And, whew, we can stop right there. I've already got the power mm -hmm. to tread on serpents and scorpions. And right. the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. Satan. Yeah. And nothing will in any way harm you. Yeah. Some of you need to make that your marching banner. Some of you need to make that your foundational scripture. I have all authority Amen. over all the power of Satan. Amen. And nothing in his kingdom right. will hurt me. That's right. Amen. Does that include sickness? Yep. Yep. It does, doesn't it? Yes. Does it include poverty? Yep. It yep. does, doesn't it? Because yep. I find poverty is a harsh taskmaster. Yep. Sickness is a harsh taskmaster. Sickness says, don't get out of bed. Sickness says, stay home. Sickness says, feel miserable. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Poverty. Come on. Harsh taskmaster. Yeah. And this, this notion that, you know, holiness and poverty are intertwined. What a joke. Come to me with the third world, and I'll show you how holy poverty is. When you see a little child that hasn't eaten in three or four days, right? Or hold a baby that's a week old and have that baby die because it hasn't been fed and can't be fed. Holy? Really? Dear Lord in heaven. Nothing holy about it. But why wait to go to the third world to exercise your authority over poverty? Why wait to go to a foreign country? To exercise authority over sickness. Right. Why aren't you doing it right here, right now? Amen. We should be, come on, the church, yeah. the ecclesia, the called out ones. Right. We should be the healthiest, yeah, come on. wealthiest yeah. group of people on the planet. That's right. Amen. What? Amen. Wait a minute. Yeah. They told me that wealthy, that you know, that filthy lucre. Yeah. 
filthy, lucre, that money's dirt, it's dirt, you know? Money is the root of all evil. So the Bible says, money's the root of all evil. That's not what the Bible says. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's right. And that's how you see where greed enters in. Yeah. And greed says, I don't care about you. I'm going to dump whatever I want to dump on your property, and I don't care if it poisons or sickens you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, somebody. Right. The Bible talks about people that are greedy have pierced them through with themselves through with many sorrows. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to be pierced through with sorrow. That sounds <laughs> terrible. I want to be generous and a blessing. Amen. 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 You see, I use money. And I love people. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't love money and use people. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Amen. Prosperity has to have a purpose, folks. That's right. Your money has to have a mission. Right. Yeah. God gave you resource to accomplish things on right. the earth. Yes, all of your bills should be paid. Yeah. Right. All your bills. All. Right. right. Houses paid off. Cars paid off. Right. Come on. Student loans mm -hmm. paid off. Right. All yeah. debt paid off. Why? Because the resource is needed in the kingdom. Right. Amen. Well, the gospel is free. It is free, but it's not cheap. Right. It costs Jesus his life. Yeah, right. So it's not cheap. Right. Amen. Amen. And some of you will not come to India with me when I go. <laughs> and some of you will not come to Kenya with me when I go. Recently was invited to Zambia. Some of you will not come to Zambia with me when I go and live in a hut. <laughs> right? Come on. I think everybody wants to go to Burgos, Spain. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I don't know. Hallelujah. Shout out to Rich and Daphne Walker out there with uh, Life of God International Church. Uh, I got an email from them and then I got a, um, a thank you letter uh, from them. The resources that we raised for them. Remember I showed you the video of the church and how beautifully they've done the inside of the church? Yeah. They've decided not to use our resource for that. Huh. Hallelujah. Our resource is being used to beautify the outside of the church, including a new sign. Glory to God! You're preaching in Burgos, Spain. The moment that sign goes up, yeah, what? Amen. Jesus is here. Amen. amen. And you don't have to go. Although some of you are going to want to go to Europe. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, I'm messing with the whole thing myself. <laughs> Glory. Verse 20. Jesus is talking again, and he says... Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this. At what? That I have given you power and authority over anything that Satan can bring against you. Right. Rejoice. Don't rejoice that spirits are subject to you. Rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, that was a little weak. <clears throat> Go to Revelation chapter 5. Go to Revelation chapter 5. Let's talk about this. Revelation, isn't that that scary book in the back? <laughs> not to the Christian. Let me help you. It's not Revelations. It's Revelation of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's for us. And we might take this tour next year and end up on the Isle of Patmos. Where John got this revelation. John was... The, Lord, the disciple that the Lord loved. John was the one that took Mary from the cross, Mary the mother of Jesus, and brought her to Ephesus, where Mary lived out the remainder of her days in the church at Ephesus. Yeah. She wasn't ascended. She's not a co-redeemer. Come on now. I'm messing with people's theology. Come on I'm now. just giving you Bible truth. But John loved her from the cross right. until she went to heaven. That's right. Why? Because Jesus asked him to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If Jesus asked John to look after his mother, right. shouldn't you be looking after yours? Yeah. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Holly, hallelujah. Glory to God. So John is on the island of Patmos, and he receives the revelation that Jesus is Lord. Right. He's, in, he's in, in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, or on the Lord's Day, he is caught up in the Spirit. And he hears a voice from behind him and above him that says, come up here. Amen. And when he saw Jesus, he didn't look like a little white fluffy lamb. 
And, you know, uh, I've known several people that have had encounters with Jesus, and they said that their encounters with Jesus is that he was about 5'11", 180 pounds, and had sandy brown hair. Amen? And looking into his eyes, according to Brother Hagin, was like looking into pools of liquid love. Yeah, come on. Why? Because he'd never had an untainted thought. Mm. He'd never had an untainted motive. Mm. Jesus' motives were always pure. His love is always pure. Are you listening to me this morning? Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Because he's saying to us, don't rejoice that the devil is subject to you. Right. Because he is. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I got three. Yeah. A couple of head shakes. Great. Yeah. yeah. The devil is subject to you. Yeah, yeah. Did you see yeah. Jesus just said that? Yeah. He said, and all the power that the devil has is subject to you. Right. Yeah, Amen. I give you authority over all of it. But don't rejoice right. at that. Right. Rejoice. Because apparently there is a book. Yeah. In heaven. Your name is in it. Amen. Are you there in Revelation 5? Yes. Hallelujah. And I saw one seated on the throne that was holding in his right hand an unopened scroll uh, with writing on the inside and the outside, and it was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw an incredibly powerful angel proclaiming with a great and loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break the seven seals? Yeah. But no person could be found, living or dead. In all of creation, not one was worthy to open the scroll and read his contents. So I, John, broke down weeping with intense sorrow because there was no one worthy to break open the scroll and read his contents. Verse 5. Then the elder said to me, stop weeping. Right. Look, right. the mighty lion of Judah's tribe, the root of David, he has conquered. He is worthy, and he is the worthy one who can open the scroll and the seven seals. And then I saw a young lamb standing before the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the 24 elders. I need to come out here and talk to you a little bit because people start getting a little lost here. So, the four living creatures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the 24 elders. What's the number of man? I heard it. Six. And six times four is? So... There's 24 elders around the throne. They represent us. The Gospels rep represent Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Are you good? Right, yeah. mm -hmm. Nothing spooky about that, right? right. Okay, good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Where am I at? Verse 6. Yeah. Then I saw a young lamb standing before the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the 24 elders, and he appeared to have been slaughtered, but now he's alive. And he has seven horns and seven eyes, which are, here's the explanation, the seven spirits of God sent out to the ends of the earth. The Holy Ghost will manifest himself in seven ways. Don't have time to get into it, but we see it here. There's horns of power and there's ability to see. And if you take a look at the tabernacle that Moses built in the wilderness, you will see that the golden lampstand that's over on the left-hand side is made out of one piece of gold, hammered gold, and it has seven. Yeah. It has seven. Right. Come on. Horns. With seven lights. Yeah. Come, uh. yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I'm sorry, was that spooky? <laughs> Hallelujah. You ready for a little more? Yeah. 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 And I saw the Lamb approach the throne and take the scroll from the right hand, the one who sat there. Who is the Lamb? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. And who is he taking the scroll from? Come on. The one who is sitting on the throne. He's taking it from God himself. So apparently God has a scroll yeah. in his hand mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because this, what we're seeing here, is a future event. It hasn't happened yet. Right. Hallelujah. Glory. And verse 8, And when the 24 elders and the four living creatures saw the Lamb had taken the scroll, what did they do? They fell face down at the feet of the Lamb and they worshipped yeah. him. That's why we have a worship service on a Sunday. It's to put us in remembrance of the one who is worthy yeah. to be worshipped. Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. is worthy yeah. of all of your worship. 
Yeah, now, I recognize, I've got to come out here, I've got to start writing some in. I recognize to some of you this is worship. <laughs> Every now and then. <laughs> this is not a Baptist church. <laughs> Love the Baptists. But you know you've got a Baptist going, they go, oh. <laughs> Amen. The Lamb that was slain, yeah. that is now alive, is the only one that was found worthy in all of creation yeah. to take the scroll. Amen. Amen. And when he did, the four living creatures and the 24 elders, somebody say, that's me. That's and me. me. Yeah. They bowed yeah. down and they worshipped him. Yeah. Why? Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He took your sin. They did. Amen. It makes him worthy. Yeah. Amen. He took your pain. Yep. Makes him worthy. Mm -hmm. He took your sickness. It makes him worthy. Mm -hmm. He went into hell and paid the penalty for your sin. Mm -hmm. It makes him worthy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. We're going to do a teacher on honor. Yeah, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You ready for a little more? You can take a little more, can't you? Yeah. yeah. Each of them, these 24 elders, each of them had a harp and golden bowls uh, brimming full of sweet fragrance and incense, which are the prayers of all God's people. And they were all singing this new song of praise to the Lamb. Because you were slaughtered for us, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. Your blood was the price paid to redeem us. You purchased us. This is the song yeah. they're singing us. This is the song that they're singing. Somebody say, this is the song that I should be singing. This is Amen. the song that I should be singing. And here's what the words are. You purchased me to bring me to God. Right. Out of every tribe, every language, every people group, every nation, you yeah. have chosen me Amen. to serve our God. You have been chosen to serve God. Right. You have been chosen yeah. to serve God. Amen. You have Amen. been chosen to serve God. Somebody say that out loud. I have been chosen to serve God. I'm not a little old me, Pastor. I'm not, I might yeah. never amount to anything. I don't do anything with my life. Nothing ever worked. And you have been chosen. Right. To serve God. Right. Somebody say that out loud. I have been chosen. chosen. Listen, chosen makes you special. Amen. Out of all the people on the earth, right. you were chosen. Right. There's seven billion souls on the earth. Right. Three billion of them have never heard of the first coming of Christ. Never mind the second coming. Yeah, right. So out of the three billion that's left, you've been chosen. Amen. I say, I say you have been chosen. Yeah. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. I've been chosen. Glory to God. And formed us. This is the song they're singing. You have chosen us to serve our God and formed us into a kingdom of priests right. who reign on the earth. Amen. Amen. You have been chosen by God Hallelujah. and formed into a kingdom yeah. that has been chosen by God to rule and reign right. on the earth. Amen. You. Somebody say me. Amen. That's little old me. Type it in the chat. Me. I've been chosen. Yeah. You've been chosen right. as a priest right. fashioned into a kingdom to rule and reign on the earth. Amen. Are you beginning to get this? Amen. Is light coming? Yes. We're supposed to be running the show. Right. The church, the ecclesia, right. driving off sickness and disease, driving out poverty and lack, driving off curse and forcing the kingdom of God. How do you enforce the kingdom of God? I'm glad you asked. In righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We had a little touch of joy here earlier this morning. Some of y'all started laughing. We had a little dab, just a little taste. Yep. Why? Because the serious work of heaven is done in an atmosphere of joy. That's good. Jesus didn't walk around in his earthly ministry going, Oh, why do we got to go to Capernaum all the time? How come we got to go over here to Corinth? <laughs> Gee, why can't we just stay home and rest? I know we like going to. No, no. Gee, everywhere Jesus went, people got happy. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because he came meeting a need. Right. Amen. He came meeting a need. But more importantly, he came giving them what was needed the most. Right. 
The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God, rejoice. The kingdom of God is drawn near. Rejoice. The kingdom of God is drawn. The kingdom of God has just showed up. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. You're supposed to be enforcing the kingdom of God. You say, what's a kingdom, Pat? I'm glad you asked. King's dominion. That's what kingdom stands for. What's it mean? You're going to have to exercise authority. Right. You're going to enforce the kingdom, God's Amen. king dominion yeah. over the earth. Right. <clears throat> and you need to start practicing it now. Right, yeah, come on. right now. Right now. Yeah. In your own personal life, right. which is the first garden you've been entrusted with. Right. Amen. And if you're married, there's your second garden. Right. If you have children, mm. there's your third garden. Yeah. Come on, somebody. If you have a job... That's all part of your garden. I like to do it like, here, can, can, we do it? Can, we, can we do this? Everybody take your finger and draw a circle. I, my, my, my good friend George is here, and he'll, he'll back me up in this, that in business, they call it your sphere of influence. Yeah. Amen. Right? Your sphere of influence. Right. Oh, y'all stop. How come? Come on. <laughs> this is your sphere of influence. <laughs> Right? This is your sphere of influence. Right. Your wife, your husband, your children, your job, your neighborhood. Yeah. Amen. 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 You've been given a sphere of influence. Amen. You're supposed to be exercising authority in there. Right? right? Amen. Come on. Amen. Reinforcing and establishing the kingdom of God. Right. Come on. Are you with me? Yeah. And do you remember the prayer of Jabez? Great big book that came out. It was a little tiny book that came out, but it was all the rage about 10, 15 years ago. Everybody was reading the prayer of Jabez. Well, there's a reason why. It's very insightful, right? Jabez, whose name literally means pain. <laughs> it's literally what his name means. It, it, he was a pain to his mother. He was a pain to his father. <laughs> he was a pain. But he said this, he had this prayer, and uh, Christian business leaders especially gravitated to it, where the prayer is, Lord, Increase the sphere of my influence. Mm. So we should not just be content with the sphere of influence that we have. We should always be asking God to expand our sphere of influence. I want to be more influential in the earth. Mm. Yeah, come on. Yeah. What? Well, that sounds arrogant. Can I help you? Mm -hmm. The best definition of leadership is not large and in charge. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not who's the dictator, who's the tyrant. Come on. Yeah, the on. best definition of leadership is influence. Yeah. If I want to be a leader, then I better be influencing people. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And if I'm influencing people, I am a leader. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Some of you are influencing people right now. Mm -hmm. You came to church this morning and your family's like, wow, we went to church this morning. Mm -hmm. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. You're influencing mm -hmm. them. You're yeah. causing them to think about things. Yeah. Some of them are going to get uncomfortable with your influence. Why do you keep going to that church? <laughs> what, what is your problem? Well, I used to have problems, and then I went to that church. Yeah. And Jesus Amen. took care of my problems because we are that church. Yeah. Amen. Right? Amen. We bring peace. We bring joy. We bring hope. Amen. So are you beginning to understand that it, your life is a little bit more about something else other than yourself? Yeah. 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 It's about who are you influencing and how. Come on. You didn't get born again for you. You desperately needed it. Yeah. So, so did I. But God's master plan now includes your sphere of influence. Right. Amen. Amen. Those people that you touch and talk to are right. What is it with you? You always seem to everything is going to hell in a handbasket around here, but you're always peaceful. Mm -hmm. You're always joyful. I mean, you come in every day, you've got a smile on your face, you sit down, you do your work, and you're a pleasure to work with. What is up with that? Come on. Coffee cup complaining like everybody else around here. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. yeah. We experienced this, you know, in a, in a foreign country just recently. And she'll back me up with this. And by the way, this isn't this. Everywhere that we went, the observation was, wow, he's really joyful. <laughs> yep, that's, that's the truth. 
I, 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 she'll tell you. Vendors, even. Wow, you uh, joy? Oh, you got joy? I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Would you like some? Ah! <laughs> what am I doing? I am enforcing the kingdom of God in righteousness, peace, and joy. And joy. joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I don't know how many times I've released joyful, just like my father. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Put that on my tombstone. He's joyful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you take a little more? Yeah. I know that you can. We're in training right now to rule and reign on the earth. If you're an athlete, a swimmer, a boxer, a runner, you just don't jump into a competition. You don't go run a, George, am I right? You just don't go run a marathon. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's it, 24 and a half? Yeah. yeah, okay, not a problem. Got it. Hey, about 24 feet in. <laughs> you listening to me? We're training down here to rule and reign. Why? Because when Jesus returns to the earth and sets up his kingdom, you're going to be ruling and reigning with him. Amen. And if you've been faithful with one small little thing, he'll make you the governor of ten cities. Yeah. And you'll report directly to him. He'll be sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. Mm. You, 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 that's, the rest of Revelation, that's what it reads. Yep. Yeah. Right? And for a thousand years, he's going to be ruling. Yeah. And for a thousand years, you're going to be ruling. Yeah. And some of you are going to get really tough cities. <laughs> and they're going to need to be straightened out. So you're going to have to grow a backbone now. Yeah. Amen. Don't shout me out because the preachers are good. Well, are you sure he's just not going to give me some nice little place out in the south? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We're in training right now. So, if you train and you train, the reason you're training is to excel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You're called to be a priest. <clears throat> right. You're called to rule. You're called to reign. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 10. This Revelation 5.10 in the Amplified says, You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 1.6. Revelation 1.6. We're gonna we're gonna start on hooking here. Are you ready? Yeah. The Passion Translation says, You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. The voice translation says, and who has established us right. to be his kingdom right. and priests for God. The Amplified says, he's formed us into a kingdom. Hallelujah. Right. So what's a kingdom? King's dominion. Right. Ruling or controlling power. Sovereignty. Mm. A king is sovereign. That's right. Sovereign is possessing supreme or ultimate power. Hallelujah. A king exercises dominion through ruling power, through being sovereign, and being sovereign means supreme power. So God is sovereign over all the universe. He's called you and I to be kings and priests. He's established us. He's formed us into a kingdom that is to exercise his sovereignty. Here in the earth. Amen. You see, people talk to me all the time about, you know, well, if God is sovereign, how come such bad things happen? Because there's lots of stuff that happens down here that is not the will of God. Yeah. And it's the yeah. church's responsibility right. to do something about That's it. Right. But we like to stand around the water cooler and whine and complain about it. All those terrible Republicans, all those terrible Democrats, all this is just awful. It's just terrible what's going on. The country's going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, and you're watching it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? We're supposed to be exercising authority. Some of y'all need to run for public office. I'll say it. Some of y'all need to run for public office. King Jesus exercises dominion over us because all power and authority was granted to him by our Heavenly Father. 
And he is the supreme sovereign of the whole universe. There is no greater authority. There is no greater power than God Almighty. He is almighty. He is all powerful. He is omnipresent. Amen. Amen. There's nothing he can't do. I said there's nothing he can't do. And he has given that authority to Jesus. And Jesus gave it to his church. Yeah. Amen. In Matthew 28. Now go Great. and make disciples Amen. of men. Amen. What does that mean? You go to places where there aren't disciples. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you say, well, Pastor, how do I do all that? You've got me all amped up. How do I do all that? Go to Ecclesiastes and I'll unload. You ready? Here's the answer. <laughs> I found the answer in Ecclesiastes. The power to rule and to reign has been entrusted to us by Jesus Christ through our Father in whose image we have been created to exercise dominion over the earth. In other words, it's our job. It's our responsibility. It is our commission to rule over all of God's creation, including Satan. Right. Yeah. And how do you do it? You there in Ecclesiastes chapter 8? Yeah. The word of a king. Let me see, I'm a king. I'm a king. Mm -hmm. Is authoritative and powerful. Yeah. Yeah. The voice translation says, Since the king has the power to enforce his word, who dare asks him, what are you doing? Right. The King James says, Where the word of the king is, there is power. Yeah. How do you exercise authority <laughs> in the earth? The words that you use. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet, everybody. We're going to get into that next week. Thank you for staying a little longer. I wanted to get us to a certain place. Here we are.